Well, good morning from a very cold Germany and I'm here in a parking garage to get my Mazda 606 out of uh, winter hibernation. Well, just join me and let's see if it will start. Well, before we start, let's see some of the other cars parked here at my uh, garage place. It's an old Ford uh, Mustang. I'm pretty sure it's a bit too dark in here. Then someone with two old BMWs and they are very, very dusty. Five series and seven series. And then we have, well, another dusty three series and underneath some blankets which you can see now there's a Jaguar XJ12 uh, and an old 123 series mug and I'm here because of well my Mazda which is here so I think I've parked it here in um, maybe October, November, I don't know. So I stop, uh, I stop using this car as soon as um, there's salt on the roads because, well, salt will kill it. That looks pretty fine. What I usually do first is a quick uh, look at all, well, you can't see anything because it's way too dark. Um, just realized when I came here I put my, uh, my uh, keys <laughs> uh, on the cover, so it's anywhere there, so well, see you in some seconds. Ta-da! Found the keys. So let's open the car and let's open the bonnet. Um, get the battery on. So it's on now. So I will change the position of the car. I'm sorry for all the chaotic movements. Well, let's see if it runs. Okay, this is looking good. All right. Okay, uh, it's very, very dark, but uh, I just used uh, the um, light on my phone. Okay, let's see if it will start. So there's a choke. It's fully open and some little pumps up right there. So uh, when you're starting the uh, six to six with choke, you um, have to press the uh, gas pedal, the throttle pedal. Um, that looks good. Fuel pumps working? No, no. If you can hear it, let's go. It's working. It's working fine. <laughs> yes. Okay, there we are. Nice running engine. It's idling now at around 1000 RPM. Whoops. Turning the lights on, gear in first, feels all very, very good. Okay, so let's just a, another walk around, it looks all, it looks all fine. Okay, let's open. The bonnet. Um, so what I usually have to check is um, the clutch fluid because last year, that's, that's tight, um, if 
found out that it has a leak on the slave cylinder, but it's, it looks fine. Um, everything else is fine as well. The water here looks good. Water there looks also very good. Hmm. Okay. That looks very, very good. Everything's fine. Apart from, well, there, there's a leak in the radiator um, somewhere, but I already have a, a new radiator in my other uh, garage, so... Well... Looks clean. Okay, let's take it for a little spin, shall we? Okay, everything looks good. Let's take this car for a, a little spin around the neighborhood. Um, it's a yeah, it's a quick drive. Okay, let's start again. And I mean, in the end. It's a Mazda, so what can possibly go wrong? And let's get it out of winter hibernation. Let's open the doors. Everything's running properly so far. Um, by the way, about this car, this is a... Well, I can't be wrong here. <laughs> it's a 78 or 79. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I think it's a 78. So, um, the Master 6 to 6, um, born as the Capella in Japan. And, well, I will make a separate video about this car, showing you the car and all its details. Um, I own this car now for I think four years or so and uh, right before this car I had a, a Reliance Scimitar SE5A and as much as I loved the car it had many many issues and well I saw this car uh, in the collection of a friend that sadly passed away um, uh, last year was it two years ago now no last year so um, I saw the car in his collection and I just said to him well I want this so I think a Mazda 6 to 6 CB2 CB2 is uh, the generation uh, of this car um, I think it's a car you I, I think you're not looking for it um, I think uh, when you see it there's some sort of attraction because um, Really, it's a very rare car. You're seeing it um, almost nowhere else. Um, I've seen two other um, in the time uh, I'm owning this, and both have been at the fantastic uh, Japan Classic Sunday in uh, Chemerd in, um, in the Netherlands, which is one of the best uh, Japanese uh, uh, classic car shows for Japanese cars. Um, also, when I got the car, I've done almost nothing to it. So it was in excellent condition. It has only about uh, uh, 50, 56,000 kilometers on the odometer. So it was rarely driven. Um, and so the whole, um, the whole condition of the car. So it's now running on 2,000 RPM. So I can just forgot to um, to have an eye on the choke, the ref counter. So, all the things I've done, so it got a new steering wheel. Um, it's a Nardi wheel, Mazda has some sort of history with Nardi, so I thought maybe it's a good idea to get a Nardi in it, because the original wheel is a bit sticky, it just feels not good. It looks, it looks pretty good. It's a three-spoke, um, a sporty wheel, 
um, but it was sticky and just felt not very nice. Well, actually quite fun to drive that. Just thought to go back to the garage, but <laughs> now I'm enjoying the car so much that I'm taking it a little longer. Um, so what else to say about this? Well, yeah, steering wheel, this is something I updated the car with, but everything else, well, what I changed is uh, the stereo. Um, when I got the car, it had no stereo. It had just this little piece of uh, plastic cramp here in the middle console. Um, and I wanted to keep it uh, as original as possible. Um, but at the same time, I love to hear some good music when I'm driving. So it needed a stereo. And I think um, for this, paid around maybe 600 because it's some sort of um, modular stereo which you can uh, build into the whole uh, fascia and there were two holes for um, two um, well not three really, and well the middle part for I don't know the right words for it to be honest. anyway um, I somehow got the stereo into this car and it's all, all I wanted. So I'm now going back to the garage. While I'm going back, I'm telling you something about uh, my fleet of cars. So currently, I own five cars. Mm. Two work as the dailies um, for family and for my wife. Uh, that is a Mercedes-Benz W124 series E20, uh, 2020, 220, sorry, 220. Um, and this is the car that has to go this year because um, I, I think I've owning this now for almost seven years and this is my, well, it's my daily. I'm driving it almost 120 kilometers per day all year. So it has some serious rust issues now. And, but honestly, um, I want to try to get rid uh, of at least one of the cars. Um, I just have noticed that this road is maybe closed. Anyway, so the Merc has to go and that's leaving us with the second daily, which is an Audi A2. And can play, you can complain about it, you can say whatever you want. I love the Audi A2. I think it's a great looking car, um, loving it. Uh, I always wanted an A2 and well now I'm having one and hell it has some issues, <laughs> mostly with the all the electronics. Um, but um, you know I need to find a way to fix all that. Now we come to the classic cars. Um, the first one is not really a classic car because it's uh, built in 2007 so it's actually the newest car I've um, I've ever owned and that's a Daihatsu Copen and just bought it recently not sure if it's a keeper um, it's huge fun to drive um, it's an excellent car uh, just like the A2 I always wanted a Copen so I got my hands on a Copen. This is now part of the, let's say, classic fleet. Then I have an MG Midget Mark II, uh, Mark III, sorry, Mark III. The one with the round wheel arches and this is the first classic car I've uh, ever owned, still in storage. Um, well, there will be another video when I will get this out of um, its well-deserved winter sleep. When I say well-deserved, I'm driving it very, very rarely. So, also, it's not the nicest example of a classic car, but I don't care because I just love it like this. Well, and then I have this one, um, the Mazda, which um, is a car, well, you know, Think of classic cars when you want a classic car with no problems at all get an old japanese just get an old japanese classic um 
Well, there are. Um, the part situation, honestly, could be worse. Um, when you buy an old Japanese classic, you just have to check out uh, in in uh, what countries this car was sold the most. So uh, the 66 CB2 was uh, surprisingly popular in Australia, and Australia still has a vibrant scene of um, 66 admirers and some of the parts I needed I've got from uh, I've got from Australia but there weren't so many so what's the real problem interior parts just impossible uh, to get interior parts um, also from the same color this car is brown in all uh, its shades <laughs> all shades of brown are in this car um, but luckily everything is in good order uh, door cards everything's fine and by the way it seems like this car is still in its uh, in its first paint so nothing dramatic has happened to it in the last uh, year so what else about parts um, mechanically no problem at all so um, other parts I needed were the um, clutch slave cylinder that was no problem <laughs> I just typed it in on, I think on Google, I just found the part in Germany. Okay, but um, before we head back to the uh, garage, I let me show you around. It's not a proper room tour. Um, what do we have here? Um, quite an interesting spec. So it's a 1.6, it's pretty much base spec, yet it has a rough counter, which is pretty neat. Um, all the controls uh, you need this is the light switch um, indicators on that side um, typical Japanese Jacko quad swatch which is only working when I am turning it and then it starts working um, stereo is aftermarket as I just said then we have the heater controls and that's it that's it nothing more um, I think on the US market, of course on the Japanese market, some other markets, you could get this in um, with an AC. Uh, it's also interesting, in Japan there were different engine options. There's the Commodore. Ah, it's a record. Well, uh, in Japan you had a 1.6 at the base, then you had the 1.8 and a 2.0. and um, I think the 1.8 never made it outside of Japan, so that was Japan uh, only. The 1.6 and the 2.0 were the export models. Uh, the 1.6 and the 2.0 in the first model years, they were looking different. Um, the 1.6 has a very, very different front end. Um, uh, this is the 1.6. And in the whole um, video I will make about this car, I will show you what that means. Um, and it was only built like that for uh, two years. And then all cars got the sort of flat front end from the um, from the 2.0 models. Um, what else to say? There was a coupe, this one, the coupe, and the um, four door. There wasn't a uh, estate version of it, so only the two-door coupe and the um, four-door saloon is the two-door coupe. A sporty car? Well, it's not. <laughs> it's not. I think 75 horsepower, maybe? I think it's 75, so that's uh, the end of it. But it's a nice cruiser, uh, even if it has only four gears. It's, it's running good. Um, I, I, I taken it almost every year to the uh, Japan Classic Sunday in Hamad and it's performing very, very well in the clubs. So the heater's on now and it's running all well. You know, it's a car I love. Um, of all the classic cars I have, this is the one I just can't sell. Um, you know, when I, when I would decide to sell the midget, which would be painful because it's the first car I've owned and I, I, I got it from Germany 
to the UK, I drove with the midget to Ebbingdon, to the old midget, uh, to the old MG factory, so it's quite an emotional feel to it. So, um, but you know, when I sell the midget and two years later, I would like to get another one, <laughs> it's easy to find, uh, when you get rid of the Mazda and two years later you want a Mazda 606 CB2 Coupe, Coupe. Um, it's almost impossible. Um, so I, I try to check regular, regularly what's uh, on the market. Um, the last good one I've seen was for sale at a dealer in Denmark uh, for around, I think, 10,000 euros, I guess. It was quite a high price. Um, I, uh, I bought this one for considerably less. Okay, now let's head back to the garage and wrap it. This is how it goes. It should open now. I'm actually driving the wrong way. I'm criminal. I'll see you soon.